But I want to see how the Osmo stacks up. Sweat level at the moment is a solid 10. I sort of got in a bad situation. I've since rectified that. What frame rate is the best frame rate for shooting motorsports? Maybe a, maybe a tip or two. Mostly uh, a method in survival. Okay, we have made it to my home race uh, at the Circuit of the Americas for the sort of American round of the World Endurance Championship. So it's pretty cool to be on home soil for one of these. Uh, I know where everything's at. I know it just it feels a lot more convenient to me, um, but it's still a WEC race. There's, this place looks amazing. I've never seen it look so good. Uh, it looks like an F1 weekend, to be honest. So just setting the stage, uh, it is late August in Texas. So naturally it's 98 degrees, 100 degrees outside. But as a bonus, we got a little bit of rain. So. Uh, it is extremely humid right now. As you can, I'm sure, see, I'm sweating. Um, uh, everything is sweating. Everything is wet. Um, but the track walk's getting ready to start. So I've got my normal Sony a7S III uh, on the Ronin gimbal, which I typically use for these type of scenic shots. But I want to see how the Osmo stacks up. It's a lot more convenient and a lot easier to just pull out and get shots. So I would love for that quality to be sort of up there where you can't tell a major difference between the Sony rigs. So I'm gonna put those two against each other on this track walk just so I can sort of compare and sort of see which one I like better. Sweat level at the moment is a solid 10. Waiting on the flag behind me, see if you can see it. Waiting for it to blow at the moment. It's not working out. <laughs> All right, track walk's done. Uh, that was very hot and I got very sweaty. Um, it occurred to me that it's probably easier to tell the difference between the Osmo and the, uh, the real camera just because the Osmo is so wide, but nonetheless, a fun exercise. I haven't looked at the stuff yet, but I hope it turned out real. But now we are getting ready to go uh, take the car onto the track and do some car beauty. So we should have pretty good light. I think the light for the track walk was really good, and I think it's I think it's still really good. So sun's getting lower. That's going to help too. Let's get out there and shoot this thing. Okay, interjecting really quickly. This is future Greg. This is post-race Greg. Uh, it's late, as you can see. Uh, I was a bit busy. I'm not gonna spoil it, but uh, let's just say I've been a bit busy. But uh, if you like this video, if you like this new format where I'm giving a lot of tips, uh, please hit the like button now. And back to past Greg. My past Greg, your current Greg. I just wanted to make a quick comment. This vlog was my first time using the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. And while that camera is so good, it's what I'm using right now. While that camera is so good, um, the stock audio is, is not great in the environments that we're in with the race cars. I've since rectified that. I've got the, the external mic attachment now that I'll use for future vlogs. But just wanted to say uh, the audio in here is a little choppy, a little windy, a little loud sometimes. And uh, it is sort of what it is. We live and learn, right? So uh, it'll be better in future vlogs, but just wanted to make that little note and back to it. All right, so we've made it to Friday. It is time for free practice one. Um, I'm sort of going out to turn 10 to get the sort of traditional Coda tower and flag shot. Uh, the light, for as good as the light was yesterday, this session is pretty much in the worst light possible. So I'm hoping it holds up. Um, the, the, at, at the very least, the, the flags are cooperating. The wind is, is a lot today, so the flags are cooperating, but hopefully the light looks good. We'll see what we get. through free practice one. Uh, we're under virtual safety car now, so the cars are kind of just putting around. But uh, I've, I've left the tower turn. I've come over to turn nine. Uh, something they do here is that if they hit the curve just right, they pull the left front off the ground. It's not an overly like exciting corner apart from that. So that's always stuff like, I'm always trying to look for that stuff. 
always trying to look for when the cars have like really good action, when they're lifting tires or getting up on the curves. For video, all that stuff comes across and it's super exciting. So that's why I'm in this spot. Hopefully we get green going again soon and I can get some because I don't really have that much just yet. Okay, uh, we've made it to free practice too. Uh, as you can tell, I have my helmet, my fire suit on. I'm on the pit lane right now. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna start this session on the pit lane. Originally, I was gonna wait until tomorrow to do that, but if you watch my Le Mans vlog, you know that I sort of got in a bad situation where when I went to shoot pits, I sort of waited, and then when I went to shoot it, we had issues, so I didn't really get anything I needed. So I decided to start a little bit earlier. I'm still gonna try to make it on track. We, we don't quite make it to golden hour, but we do get close, so I might try to fake it a little bit, but so we're gonna jump to a little POV cam of the pit lane. the stage for you. thought I had a plan. I was going to go to the pit lane. I was going to get at least one full service stop and then I was going to go out on track so that I can take advantage of some of this good light on both sections. I was uh, not so on on my pit stop. Uh, I was a little off I would say but I said you know what it's going to be 20 minutes before they come back out. I'm going to stay committed and go out to the track. So I finally get out to the track. I swear it's, I, 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 I'm telling you as soon as I set my tripod up. Red flag. Worse yet on that is that when they come in like that, they do a pit stop. So if I just would have waited it out, I'd be in good shape, but. All right, while we're under red flag, maybe a, maybe a tip or two. So I am set up here at the last turn to shoot through this fence because you get a nice view sort of going all the way up the front straight that the client wants. Now, unfortunately, this is a pretty thick fence. So things that I do when I have to shoot through a fence, number one, Get the camera as absolute close as you can. There is no replacement for the camera being as close as you can get. Number two, shoot as wide open of an aperture as you can. If you have a 2.6, let's do that. My camera right here, when I'm punched all the way out to 400, is only 5.6, so I get as low as I possibly can. Punch out as far as you can. So whatever, obviously your shot is your shot, right? But punch the lens in as far as you can. In this case, I can be all the way at 400, which helps, but if you can't be that far, punch in as far as you can. Lastly, a little bonus tip. If you can find sort of a shaded spot of the fence or a place that the shadow is hitting, it'll help hide those fence marks just a bit more. It's Saturday, it's a new day. Uh, yesterday uh, was not very good. Right, before today kicks off, I'm gonna talk about one of the questions that uh, I get asked a lot, which is what frame rate is the best frame rate for shooting motorsports? And the answer to that, uh, it may seem uh, a bit vague, but I'm, I'm changing my frame rate all the time. There's not a specific frame rate that I use all the time. The, the gist of it is, if I see a, a shot where I've got good action on the car, so in my case yesterday, I was shooting in turn nine, and the cars were pulling the left front off the ground a little bit, that's something that I want to capture in slow motion. The client will want to post that in slow motion. It can really emphasize and edit uh, when it's in slow motion. Now, with that said, there are a lot of places on the track where I want to capture the speed of the cars. And in those cases, I'll always shoot in 24 frames a second. And I shoot the pit lane in 24 frames per second. I think it really emphasizes the speed and, and the sort of chaos. So that's my sort of approach to frame rates when I'm out here shooting on track.
better session. We're back. We're back. All right, that's autograph session done. It's a bit hectic. It's super hot. So mostly uh, a method in survival more than anything else. But I'm excited to get back. I got to do some clips, do some editing really quickly because we have qualifying uh, in about an hour and a half. So. Unfortunately, I need to be on the pit lane for that, so I'll have to put my fire suit back on, so. Send prayers, send thoughts, send water if you can. Okay, and that's Hyperpole uh, for, the, for the team. Pretty stoked for them. Uh, their first, I believe, their first wet uh, pole. Um, the clouds are out now, sorry if it's a bit dark, but I'll be real honest, I was a bit uh, caught up in it all, so I didn't even think to turn on anything POV recording wise. Um, I was just I was just sort of in it, to be honest. I, I'm very sweaty, I'm sure as you can tell from my shirt. Uh, we had I had my fire suit on at the time, because you have to have that, but I'm very sweaty. I'm very uh, tired, and now I definitely have to go make an edit and pump that thing out pretty quick, so yeah, pretty pretty excited for the boys that's uh that's a mega result for them vlogception <laughs> this is what you do isn't it greg yeah <laughs> harry finally this is his first time touching a real camera <laughs> See, my knees are a jib crack <laughs> shot after Harry was done playing with my camera, it was time to actually get to work and get my reel done. I wanted to get it out pretty quickly because we qualified in first place. That edit is what you're seeing on screen now. I was pretty proud of it, especially considering how fast we turned it around. I was pretty tired at this point. I was ready to get to bed because tomorrow, it's rest day. On the next episode. It took all of five minutes to get sweat in my eyeballs. If I'm glistening because I'm sweating profusely. Money shot, baby.